Hi friends, today we are going to talk about Java streams and how we are going to convert this into complex Java maps. And why maps? Because a lot of times Java developers convert lists into maps because in their algorithms to look up things very fast, maps are important. So maps become central to many of the algorithms. So here we're going to look at how do we convert Java streams, usually a list, into maps. We're going to look at collectors like to map, to list, and then we try to group by certain attribute or map by certain attributes, and also do some summarization of the list. So let's start. In all of our examples, we are going to take a list, which is a list of person. And as you can see, the person is a record which contains ID, name, age, gender, and city. And gender and cities are basically nothing but enums. These are Java enums. And if you are unfamiliar with enums or records, I have several videos out there which talks about enums and records. So please refer to those. And our streams code is going to be right over here. All of our code will be referencing the person's list. And you can imagine that code in the next slides to be right at this place. So typically when we use streams, we think about filtering and then mapping and then converting it to a list. Just like here, we do a filter based on the gender and then we extract the person's name and then that creates a completely different list of names. So for example, the code out here will be outputting all the female names. But what if we want to convert into maps instead of lists? So here's one example where we actually use imperative style and not functional style. So here we are actually creating a gender map and then iterating over the person list. And for each list, we add it to the gender map. Now, typically we would check if the gender map contains that person gender. And if it doesn't, we create a new array list and then add it to the array list and then add it to the map. A shortcut for that is to use compute if absent. And that is what is being done over here. Even though that is convenient, that's not really ideal because as Java developers, we tend to think that we are repeating that same code again and again. So functional style of programming has taken over. And let's see that functional style. So here's where we are going to create a map of person key to the person object. So I'm going to take the list of person and create a map based on the person ID. So how do I do that? I use the collectors.toMap. Now collectors is a class which contains a lot of static methods which are going to return us collector implementations. And these collector implementations are going to be input to the collect call of the stream. That's what the collect call will take, a collector interface. That tells the collect method how to convert the person list into any particular structure. In this case, we're going to use maps. So in the to map method, we have the person colon colon ID. That's the method reference. That's a lambda which takes person as input and returns the ID of the person as output. Then the second parameter is the function dot identity because we want just the person object we are just going to simply use the person object. So function.identity is nothing but same as saying p arrow p. That's the lambda corresponding to the function.identity. And then the last parameter is a by function, which takes two person objects and returns one. That's when there is a clash. Not important in this case, because we are assuming that the person has a unique ID. Though this is important, in most cases, we actually want to map an attribute of the person to the list of the person. So let's see what I mean by that. So here's an example where I'm going to map the gender to the list of person, because that way I can say, who are all the males or who are all the females? I can easily find out by looking up the map. So how do I do that? I use collectors.groupBy. So the group by method is going to take, in this case, a method reference, person colon colon gender. That is supposed to be the key on which this grouping is going to be done. 
So what is the output of this? The output of this is a map with gender as the key and a list of person as the value. So this is convenient. Recall that we did something similar in imperative style programming right over here, and that's a lot more complex than this. But what if we don't want the list of person, but rather list of some attribute of the person, maybe name? So in that case, we use something called as collectors.mapping. So here you can see that the collector interface can be passed to other collector interfaces. So for example, here we use the grouping by to group by gender, but the resulting streams for each gender is then going through the collectors.mapping by name and then collecting as a list, which means we are not using the person object list, we are going to be using the person name list. So the resulting output is map of gender to the list of person names, that is the list of strings. Now we can also do a summarization of this collection. For example, if I don't want the list of person or person name, I want the count of people. So in that case, I want for each gender, what is the number of people? So I want to create a map of gender to long, long representing the count. So in that case, we can use collectors.counting. So again, here we first group by the gender, and then within the group, we can use collectors.counting. That is the second parameter, which will count the number of person and then return the count. But what if you want to use map of map of attributes? Now things are getting complex. So here you can see we can use multiple grouping by in a cascading way. The first grouping that is done is person colon colon gender, that is by gender. But the stream for each one of the gender would then again be grouped by person colon colon city, which is the method reference for the city of the person. So the end result of this is a map of gender to a map of city which points to the list of person. So a complex data structure has been created so easily by using streams and collectors. Now the bottom piece of the code here is how to access the map, which is fairly straightforward. We will look at gender city map. Only thing is that we are actually not using the get method, we are using the computative absent method because in case the return value is null, automatically a hash map will be returned and not a null. So nulls are very neatly taken care of when we use computative absent. So the end result of this code is that we are actually getting the list of person objects for all males who live in New York City. But what if we want to create a map of map of attributes to the summarization and not the list? It's the same trick. We are going to use grouping by at the first level of grouping, then grouping by again at the second level, this time at city. And then at the third level, we are going to group by counting, that is the count. So the end result is we are getting a map of gender, which points to a map of city, which points to the count of the number of people. So feel free to comment about this video and let me know if you want me to create a video of actual coding on this or if you want me to go deeper into the collector interface itself because collector interface is also quite complex and I, I did not cover that. I just told you how to actually use it. But if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel for such Java content.